Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 67 of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. As always, it's your host, Charles, and today we have a fantastic one for you. We got the man, the myth, the legend, John McAfee. I know you guys have been waiting for this one. I am extremely excited that I'm finally getting it out. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, so let's just get into it. But before we get into it, uh, just two quick things. Uh, First... As always, I like to ask you guys to subscribe. Uh, you don't want to miss any of these episodes. I'm going to be doing five a week. We're going to be hitting you hard. And if you're not subscribed, you're going to miss these episodes. And we really don't want that to happen. And then secondly, uh, the podcast has picked up a new sponsor. I'm very excited about this one. The, that sponsor is Roundly X. Uh, I'd really been looking for a sponsor that I can kind of get behind. Uh, something that I can use. And Roundly X is just that. So Roundly X helps you invest your spare change into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies by rounding up each of your purchases. Uh, it's kind of like the acorns of crypto. If you don't know what that is, I'll walk you through it right now. So what you do is you create an account and you hook up your credit or debit card. Uh, and then when you go make a purchase at the store, say it's $1.45, right? It'll round that up to $2. You'll invest 55 cents. And that 55 cents will be invested into Bitcoin. Uh, it's super simple to get set up. It took me maybe five minutes to do it. And uh, it's just another great way to stack sats. I know a lot of people hate that term, but it really is the easiest way. I've been preaching this really hard lately. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to trade, and you want to become more of that long-term investor, what you want to do is dollar cost average, and these guys help you do it. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description below. I highly encourage you to check out the website, sign up for their service, get your cards linked so that you can start stacking Bitcoin. Things are starting to turn around and you want to acquire as much Bitcoin as possible right now. Uh, I've been doing it and I think you guys should do the same. Now let's get into the episode. So John, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and before we really get into it, can you just give me and my audience a little background on yourself and what you've been up to lately? It depends on how lately, I guess. Um, for the past five months, uh, Janice, uh, my wife, and I have been uh, in hiding um, for uh, you know uh, five months prior to that, or six months prior to that. We were on the run in the Caribbean on our yacht. Uh, we uh, were, uh, we had to run to the Bahamas just before we were collected by uh, Paul Roll, the commissioner of police. Um, whom, by the way, I outed by giving his private uh, bank <laughs> information, the bank account number and all the deposits and withdrawals for a two-year period. Um, listen, if you want to fuck with me, I will fuck with you. And so that's what I did. Uh, anyway, and while we were on our way to Cuba, since we had to run to the Bahamas, uh, uh, headlines in the uh, Nassau Bahamian Bahamas newspapers, Paul Roll sues John McAfee for defamation of character. <laughs> anyway, uh, went to Cuba. Um, we were there for a month and a half, and the Cuban government called us in. A military aide comes out and sits down and, and tells us um, that uh, the U.S. government has requested uh, that we be returned uh, on official request, since there is no official channel between the U.S. and Cuba. He said the uh, and we replied that it would take a few days to consider. Um, so we would prefer, uh, Mr. McAfee, if you just left Cuba within 72 hours. And I said, you bet. And they kept coming by at least twice a day. It's hard to get a big ass boat prepped to go to sea um, for a number of days into another country. So we worked hard and they came by every day, a couple of times a day, Ms. McAfee, are you sure? You're going to be out of the country in 51 hours. And finally, I went, listen, if I have to swim to Haiti from here, I will be out of the country. You know, work. So we did get out of the country. We were four days at sea. We pulled into the Dominican Republic and were immediately arrested. 
uh, on bogus charges. They, they did not let us speak to customs or immigration. We were surrounded by um, the internal um, Dominican Republic security forces. Ugly bunch of people. Um, uh, we were arrested, I spent four, day, four, four days in confinement. Um, not very pleasant conditions. And um, finally, through legal maneuvers, I avoided, and again, they were trying to send me back to the, to the States. Um, and that was their, their goal. And at the very last minute, we got a court order that stayed that process. And then they let us go to England instead. And then Janice and I just said, listen, you know, are you tired of running for a while? And she goes, yeah. I said, let's just go in hiding. And we did. We've been hiding five months. It's like heaven on earth compared to the rest of our life. I, you know, every time I get an update on your story, it's just, it gets more crazy. Uh, and we see very limited stuff on social media and we try to follow along. Uh, so I really appreciate you kind of just walking us through this last, you know, six months, a year. Um, and I, I'm, I'm truly sorry for what you've been through. Um, really is crazy. I'm glad you guys are feeling a little bit better. You sound like you're in pretty good spirits right now. Um, oh, Jesus. We're in, we're in great spirits. Oh, no, seriously. Being in hiding is like, it's like vacation. It's like, it sounds I mean, like other paradise. Than the fact that we, other than the fact we can't have telephones. All right? that's, a, that's a negative. I mean, like if you get a taxi and it gives you his card or the phone number, you can't fucking call him if you, you know, misplace each other. <laughs> right? Um, and so it's just, but that's minor. Yeah. Um, super tiny. The things. rest of it is as easy as can be. Um, well, it, I, it's good to hear that you are in good spirits and you guys are enjoying yourselves and kind of feeling a, a little bit better than, you know, being harassed by the Cuban government, you know, get out of our country. You need to leave now. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, the reason I wanted to bring you on is that, you know, you're very well known in the space. Uh, the cryptocurrency space, and you're a huge proponent of cryptocurrencies. Uh, so I was wondering if you could give us some of your reasons for being, you know, such a big supporter of cryptocurrencies and how people can utilize them and kind of incorporate them into their life. All right. Um, before I talk crypto, why don't I talk a little bit about what the current um, monetary uh, financial reality of the world is? That'd be perfect. Uh, we're, we're, Wherever you live, if you're in America, uh, for example, the U.S. dollar is the accepted currency. And people control that currency. The Fed, uh, whatever dark maneuverings involving dark unknown faces that go on behind it, uh, can increase the money supply on a whim, uh, devaluing all of your hard-earned savings. They can do the reverse. They can monitor through world banks and local banks what money is coming to you and what money is leaving your hands. In most cases, certainly in the larger cases, buying houses, cars, etc. Um, it, it means the following: you cannot do anything without that currency. You have no feelings. You need the currency to buy a car, buy a house, pay the rent get your kids to school, get medical care. Every single thing in your life is based on that currency. And that currency is out of your control. So you are at the whim of other hands. With cryptocurrency, there is no control in agency. The blockchain is a distributed, decentralized world in which no one has control of anything. And at the same time, all of your transactions are trustless, meaning they don't require trust. Mathematics does everything for you. Um, you don't have to know anything about uh, who you're transacting business with. Now, this is very freeing, especially for people like me, and it's monitored in everything that I do. I don't pay taxes. I refuse to. Taxation is death. I finally started uh, <laughs> walking my talk because I've been talking it forever. And I go, well, why am I paying them then? What example am I giving to the world? So it's about paying. 
Um, the IRS now, of course, is I'm number one on their hit list. Uh, and since I developed the distributed exchange, I'm number one on the SEC's hit list. So in any case, um, the reason I got into crypto is because it is the golden key that can unlock our slavery cage. Slavery to the dollar or the yen or the euro. Slavery to that which you do not control. And instead, you can control everything in your life that involves you with cryptocurrency. So this is why. That was, you know, very beautifully put. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, when, when I'm talking about people, I'm talking about people who aren't involved in cryptocurrencies. Uh, they, they think it's this very complex thing, but you just whittled it down to, you know, a paragraph, you know, two minutes of talking. And it was very beautifully put. Um, so one thing I do want to ask is, what have you been doing? Because right now you're in hiding. So are you using cryptocurrencies to pay for things on a day to day basis? Are you using local currency? Uh, what are you up to right now? Well, I always lose cryptocurrencies wherever and whenever possible. There I mean, we if we don't do that, then we're screwing ourselves. So, so many people get into crypto to get rich uh, on the exchanges. <laughs> it's, it's like going to Las Vegas. Might get rich here. Well, uh, you know, I don't want to live in Las Vegas. I mean, it's an exciting place, of course. But we've taken a golden key. Uh, that could unlock our cage uh, of slavery. And instead, what are we doing? We're scratching our back with the equipment. <laughs> Please, people, wake up and use this. Yeah, you're you're really practicing what you preach. You're talking about, you know, you're okay. using cryptocurrencies whenever possible. You've said, you know what, I'm not going to pay taxes anymore. Uh, so you're really out here practicing what you preach. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, Twitter is a hub for me on my cryptocurrency information, the community. I think a lot of the people on there don't practice what they preach. You're here. You're doing exactly what you're talking about. And I think that's beautiful. Um, now, my one concern is that, you know, the masses, they, they clearly know what Bitcoin is or they've heard about Bitcoin. And I think that most of them at least understand, you know, how it works or what it is, the purpose of it. Uh, but there still doesn't seem to be, you know, as much interest and use as there should be or could be. Uh, so to all my listeners out there, you know, what what can we do to kind of spread adoption and get more people in on this movement and kind of taking the power back and taking the control back? Well, I think the first thing we can do is we can be honest with ourselves. I mean, we, you mentioned Bitcoin. Uh, listen. Bitcoin is not the answer to anything. It was simply the first of the cryptocurrencies and will always have value because of that. But I mean, let's be honest, folks. If, if uh, you broadcast your Bitcoin wallet for donations or if you sell me something or buy something from me forever after, I can look inside your wallet and see how much you had, what came in, what went out to whom, how much. Now, I'm sorry, but this is not the basis of an economic revolution or a revolution in currency. It's an old, clunky technology. It was the first. It's 10 years old, for heaven's sake, people. No, we have real blockchains now that do real things like Monero. Privacy. There's simply no way to unravel a Monero transaction. And... It, it's the most popular coin. In fact, it's the only one. If you go onto the dark web, you can't buy shit without Monero. <laughs> it's why? Because you can't trace it under any circumstances. To a person, you can trace nothing about the transaction. It is private between two peers. End of story. Uh, then there's smart contracts like on Ethereum and many of the other blockchains where you can create an entire world on the blockchain using the logic of smart contracts, which is how I built uh, the McAfee Distributed Exchange. So um, the, the first step is, what, what are we actually trying to get people to come in for? If it's Bitcoin, we're wasting our fucking time. 
But if it's the actual functional coins, things that give you privacy, that allow you to create universes on the blockchain, well then fuck yes, people will come in for that. But to say Bitcoin, well, first of all, it's no privacy, no blood, and then no smart contracts. Anybody using it is like, you know, why don't you take an ad out in the New York Times telling them what your transactions are because it's the same thing. No, it's an old technology that stopped using that fucking name, people. I mean, I love Bitcoin and it's going to be around forever. But that's surely no reason for anybody to enter the world of cryptocurrency. So you don't think that because, you know, Bitcoin's the most well-known already and it's, you know, the first of its kind, or at least the first that has lasted, uh, you don't think people should be using that to get others introduced and interested in no, cryptocurrency? No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Think about it. People aren't stupid. People are coming into something new are going to have questions and curiosity. First question I'm, I would have is, God, I love it. Now, if I do a transaction with somebody, is it private? And they go, oh, fuck no, the whole world knows. I go, oh, oh really? Um, can, I, can I create um, a contract with people on this so I don't need fucking lawyers? Oh, fuck no, 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 that came in later blockchains. Please, God, people wake the fuck up. <laughs> it's seriously, people well, aren't stupid. No, Bring them in. I understand Pardon. that. But um, I, I don't know. I feel like with uh, in a society where credit cards are so normalized and people are so OK with the fact that all of their transaction history can be viewed. Do you think that they will have an issue with people being able to use the, or view their Bitcoin transactions? Anybody who understands privacy, of course, and those are very smart people are definitely going to want it. But do you those think who don't? Those who don't, we don't want them in this space because they're not going to understand anything else. And we'll simply call them everything else. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think maybe we may have a difference of opinion there. Um, but okay. So, so you're saying, you know, get them introduced with other currencies like Monero or... Well, things that they can understand the value of using. I mean, to bring them into Bitcoin and say, this is equivalent to a credit card. They say, well, okay, so what? But you say, this is Monero. This is the equivalent of a bank vault where you lock yourself in with the person you're doing business with and nobody can get in, monitor it, control it, or even see it. Well, goddamn, that'll bring some people in. There we go. I, I, I mean, I, th I think there is merit to Bitcoin. I, I'm a firm believer in Bitcoin myself. We may have a little bit of a difference in opinions. What, uh, what's the merit? I'm curious about the merit because I, I was the sixth largest Bitcoin miner in the world for two years when I ran MGT. Um, and I saw absolutely zero merit to Bitcoin. If you could tell me what that might be, yes. I, I would love to hear it. Of course, of course. So, I mean, when you started the conversation and I asked you why you were a big proponent of cryptocurrencies in general, uh, you mentioned the fact that with our fiat currencies, they are controlled by somebody else. Uh, they can kind of change things out of whim. You know, inflation can run rampant, that kind of thing. And they can monitor, and they can monitor you oh. right, to, the, to the central bank. That's my big thing. They're monitoring you all the time. Okay. So, this is, so there's one of your big things is that, you know, with something like Monero, it's not possible. Uh, so you're, you're very big on privacy. Um, well, but, because I think without it, my friend, we don't have a society. If everybody knew everything about everybody else, we would have chaos and murders in the street uh, from spouses shooting their spouses. I mean, these gods, you know this is true. You can't live without privacy. Every single human being unconsciously exercises a complex web of privacy filters with every relationship that they have. You just never looked at it. You never thought about it. For example, if you buy something at the store, you've never been in that store, and the, you talk to the checkout clerk, and if the checkout clerk says, "Oh hi, uh, listen, you know, I had sex with my my husband's brother <laughs> last night. I'm not sure exactly what." Now, what would you think? That person's crazy. Yes, of course. Because the privacy filters for a casual relationship demand 
that you don't release that level of, of private information to that person. And a casual acquaintance, you might tell them where you work, where you live, how old you are. To a good friend, you might tell them everything, including possibly the fact that you did sleep with your husband's brother. And to your husband, you might actually tell them the truth or not. Good God, people, privacy is the glue that keeps this world turning. And if you do not see that, then no wonder we are in slavery. Okay, I, I can agree on, on that to a certain extent. I, like I was saying, though, I think uh, with the society that we currently live in uh, and um, credit card transactions, for example, uh, those are not private. I mean, they're private to, you know, my neighbor, yes, uh, but they aren't completely private. There is this third party ha that has access to kind of my information. Uh, but I do, see right. where, I do see where you're going where, you know, everybody... Has access. But the problem is, yeah, the problem is with Bitcoin, even your neighbor. Yes, 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 yes. I see, I see what you're saying. Wake up, people. Wake the fuck up, people. You know, we got to drop our ideologies in this field of the blockchain and cryptocurrency if we're going to survive, because there's a war coming, for God's sake, and we're pissing and moaning about different cryptocurrencies and which is best. Please, people, get real. In this war, if we don't have privacy coins, and distributed exchanges and crypto is going to be eradicated. This I promise you. I I see where you're coming from. Uh, so kind of bringing you back to the question, then. Okay, so you're you're a huge proponent of Monero. I'm no no. I'm a huge proponent of the privacy. Going, I don't give a shit about Monero or Safex. Okay, 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 there we, there we go. Zcash. I don't give a flying fuck. Okay, just privacy coins. Yeah, yeah. My my mistake. So privacy coins in general, right? And you see a huge value to them. I can see a huge value to them as well. I don't think the general public has come around to it yet. Uh, so getting back to the question of like, what can we do as proponents of cryptocurrencies uh, to get more people on board other than explaining it? Because I think all of us have kind of gone through the struggle of we've tried to explain cryptocurrencies to our family, our friends, our neighbors. Uh, with no avail. So, what do you have any more tips for us or my audience? On to show them, to show them how how useful it is. I mean, I buy everything with crypto that I can, and I hang out with people who buy or sell everything with crypto. And um, uh, you just show them. That's another reason you can't use Bitcoin. Nobody fucking takes Bitcoin anymore. It's too goddamn uh, time consuming. But the number one is DAI, the number two is Monero, um, and on down the line, except for the, um, the, the stable coin, DAI, everything is privacy in terms of use, not in terms of market share. No one gives a shit about that. That's not real. That shows nothing about the true value of a coin or a token. The true value is its use. How many are using it? Number one, absolutely, stable coins. Number two, privacy coins. We have to get real. And so when we onboard them, we don't point to Bitcoin for fuck's sake. We point to something that's actually used. And so let's like Monero, since it's the number one privacy coin, and find a place that does not take Monero, that takes cryptocurrency. Everybody does. Now, try to find places that still take Bitcoin. Nobody does. So we need to be real. Let's talk crypto, not Bitcoin. And let's show them coins that say, look what I can do with Monero. Bang. Five seconds. I now own that item and it's being shipped to me tomorrow morning. Or what have you. That will sell. There I mean, we you go. can't sell. You can't sell Bitcoin to a smart person who is new to this industry, given everything else that we have now. We need to change our tactics, people. Please, God, we need to grow this and grow this on a solid foundation. Bitcoin is not. Ethereum is not. Okay. Yeah. I, it's, I think the Bitcoin maximalists are going to be out to get you after this episode. Um, I, listen, listen I, if it's a Bitcoin maximalist. Like you care. I mean, if, if people cannot see the truth of their surroundings and how it has changed 
over a 10 year period, then why should I care if they're after me? Yeah. They have no chance of getting me. <laughs> or if they're, they're that stupid, please God, how are they going to get me? <laughs> no, not, not like an actual out to get you, but I think they're going to be a little bit bitter at what you're saying right now. Um, they have to wake up eventually, please God, people. You're like all somnambulists wandering around sleepwalking in a world which has transformed itself from the time you went to sleep. Good God, wake up. There we go. H hearing it here first, um, I'm not a huge fan of the Bitcoin Max list myself. I make that pretty apparent on social media platforms. Uh, I think they're very closed-minded and one-tracked, uh, and, and I don't agree with that. Uh, there are there is merit, like you were saying, to many other cryptocurrencies. My question is the following: Please, can some Bitcoin maxes tell me what it's good for? I'm, I'm serious. I mean, can you tell me one fucking thing it's good at compared to the thousands of other options we have? Name something, please, people. You can't. I'll, uh, it's an old archaic technology. It was the first, it's like the first mobile phone, those things that the army had, which weighed 50 pounds and took two people to carry. Do you understand? And now we have smartphones that we carry in our goddamn pockets, metaphorically, in the crypto world. I love Bitcoin and it deserves its place of honor, but it can't be used. Good God, wake up. I definitely see the merit to other coins, which I, I kind of want to agree with you on. Uh, and now kind of moving forward, because you've talked about, you know, what you've been doing for the last year or so and how we can kind of get more people on board. Um, I always like to ask this question of my guests, and that is, what are you most excited for in the coming 12 months? And I feel like you have, you know, very big visions for the future. Um, I could be wrong and that could have changed, but I think you... Uh, you have a lot of foresight. Uh, so can you just tell, tell my audience and myself what you're most excited for in the coming 12 months? Oh, well, for me personally, of course, I'm, I'm running for president for the second time. I wanted to get into uh, that, so, actually. So the, so the next 12 months for me are going to be, unfortunately, very busy with campaigning. Now, I, I don't want to be president, and I can't be president. Anybody who thinks John McAfee can be president, stop taking drugs and seek medical help. <laughs> Um, because you have OD'd on something bad. No, I can't be president. I don't want to be. I didn't want to be in 2016. I was a runner-up for the nomination in the Libertarian Party, but I didn't want to be. And had I won, I would not have taken it. I don't want to do that. So I the... want to just wake people up to the truth of our political reality in America. There we go. I was going to ask, so then what, what would the reason be for running? And it's obviously to kind of bring awareness to the issues at hand. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm 74. I, I was 14 years old um, in 1960 when uh, Dwight Eisenhower was preparing his speech about warning America that the military industrial complex and the CIA are the greatest threats to American freedom that have uh, that have assaulted this country, and they are. Uh, and uh, so at, at that time, good God, America was such a open space. There was nothing that couldn't happen, and all of it was good. You knew it was good. We had, we had the the sky is the limits attitude, and no barriers. Nobody interfering in your life, nobody peeking in windows, no cameras on streets monitoring every fucking movement. No, nothing. You were free, you were, you were private. We had secrets which you could choose to tell or not. And that's disappeared. Instead, we have a police state, a totalitarian regime based on information control because information is the ultimate power of these days and that information is taken from the surveillance of its citizens so we are the enemy now 
and we will always be the enemy until we reverse this madness of taking privacy from citizens. And we have time for one more question. So my last question, I guess, would be, you know, I always like to ask for a biggest tip, I would say. Uh, so what's your biggest tip for my audience just on life in general? Because I feel like you're a very interesting man. Uh, and so just a life tip for all of us. Yeah, it's simple. I mean, everybody my age comes to the same conclusion, and that is do what you love and nothing else. And I mean that if you wake up on a Monday morning and um, you don't feel the father. Oh, God, yes, it's Monday. I can't wait to get back to work. I mean, I, I loved my weekend with my family, but God, I can't wait. Yes. And then on Friday, you have sort of a sort of a panging sensation. Oh, God, the week is over. And I wish sometimes I could work on weekends, but it's okay. I'll be back on Monday. If that's not your attitude, then you do not love your work. And you should fucking stop. And if you do not have the same attitude toward your family, your friends, your living situation, your church, whatever, then leave. Move on. Find a new life. Man, and that's I, it. Thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate you coming on, John. Thank you so much. And uh, look forward to seeing what you've got going on during your campaign and in the next year. Thank you very much. All right, that wraps up another episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I just want to take a quick second to remind you to leave us a review and subscribe to the show. We would greatly appreciate it if you did. And we look forward to seeing you next episode.